Hey guys, how's it going? Let's do something fun. Let's make something that's really cool. I'm going to lob around some fireballs, play with some interesting effects, and uh, see what we can make happen there. So uh, what I've got here for you guys is a couple of things, just a little sound effect. And I've also got you an 8x8 flipbook, uh, which I sourced online. I'll leave a link to the description for the, for the website where I got that. And you'll also need the starter content, which if you don't have, just come down here to the corner in uh, your content browser to add new. Head up to add feature or content pack. And then over in content pack, you should see starter content and then just add it to your project because we'll be using uh, one or two little things that'll be found over there in the in the starter content. So uh, let's get started. Let's make ourselves a fireball. Uh, let's right click. We'll make a material. Uh, we'll call it uh, fireballs underscore mats. And we'll open it up and we'll drag in our flipbook here, our 8x8 flipbook and get started. So what we'll need is obviously a flipbook. So let's right click, get ourselves a flipbook node, and uh, then we can hook our uh, texture up to it. First though, uh, let's right click here. We'll need the time, uh, which will just get us the, the delta time of our game, just in the material format. Grab ourselves a multiply node by holding an M and clicking. We'll also need a scalar parameter. So hold an S and click, and we'll just call it uh, time multi. This will allow us to control uh, sort of the frame rate of our uh, flipbook. So we'll just set this to one for the time being. We'll just go for real time, plug this into our multiply, hook up the result of this multiply to our animation phase. And then we'll need to set the number of rows and columns of our flipbook, which we know to be eight by eight. So let's hold in one and click the graph for a constant, set this guy to eight, and we can plug him into number of rows and number of columns. Then out of the UVs of our flipbook node here, we'll just plug these into the UVs of our uh, texture. We'll set the Preview mesh here to a plane, just so that we can see a little bit better. And then uh, what's next? Well, let's uh, get a multi and a scalar, so we can control how much the fire, the fireball sort of glows. So we'll just put our glow crank, set it to 10, plug this into the B value of this multiply, the RGB of our texture into the A value, and grab our material attributes node over here. We want to set this to translucent. We want to make it unlit, and we'll make it two-sided as well. So with that done, we can hook this up, uh, multiply it into the emissive color over here, and we'll grab the red channel of our fireball and plug this into opacity. And we should see over in our preview mesh, this is what our fireball is going to look like. So this is our material finished. Uh, we are done here, so let's just save that. And we can make this uh, an instance later on if we want to you know, manipulate uh, these, these values and whatnot. But we can close that for the time being. And I've got the first person character over here, just the default uh, first person character template. And we'll use this for setting up our, uh, our shooting. But first, we wanna make our fireball blueprint. So jump back to our editor over here and right click in our content browser, make a new blueprint class, make it an actor, call it, uh, let's say, we'll call it our fireball underscore uh, P or actually BP then underscore proj for projectile. There we go, and we'll open this guy up. So here we have just a, a default uh, actor with nothing in it at the moment. So we'll come up here to add component. Let's add ourselves, first of all, a sphere collision. Drag this onto our default scene root to make it the root component. And there we have our uh, sphere radius there. We'll also make this a little bit smaller just so it fits a bit better in our scene. We'll make this down to 24 in our sphere radius. Then back up to add component. Let's add ourselves a plane just a basic shape plane. And then we can put our material onto it. So I'll just tear that off, drag our, oh, all right, there we go, in our material, drag our fireballs map over onto our element there. And there we go, that's got that sorted. We can make this a little bit smaller because uh, we don't necessarily need a really big fireball. About the size of our sphere collision will be, will be just fine. And then because obviously fire produces light, let's add another component, we'll add ourselves a point light. And our point light, uh, which we could just add to our uh, to our root component there. Uh, let's see, we'll make our intensity uh, 3000, our attenuation radius 300, and we'll make it a nice sort of fiery orange color. There we go. So we can compile and save that. And we are ready to keep going. So let's make ourselves a function here. What we need to do is set this plane here so that's always facing the player. So we always get that, that nice front on view of our uh, fireball, it doesn't look too weird because it's on a 2D plane. So we'll make ourselves a new function, call this face fireball. And we want to grab our plane here, just drag this into the graph, drag off here and set world rotation. 
because we're only going to be affecting the rotation of our plane. All right, now let's do some uh, some calculations here. So let's right click, get our player camera manager, just like that, and then we'll drag off this. We'll get our camera location. There we go. And we want to subtract this from where this current actor is. So if we right click here, we'll get our actor location. Uh, where is it? Get actor location. And then we'll drag out of these vectors into a subtract vector minus vector. And we'll subtract these two from each other. Then we'll normalize this vector. Where are we? Normalize. We'll normalize the vector. Let's make myself a little bit of, little bit of space here. And then we'll get our rotation from that vector. So rotation from X vector. We'll right click this and split. And then we will make a rotator out of uh, this rotation. But obviously we don't want to be rotating on every axis. We just want uh, the one um, to adjust uh, the rotation, I think, of our, our Y value. But we can, we can adjust these things as we go. So let's just get a make rotator because all we want to do is just correct where our Y rotation is going to be. We can plug in our X and our Z, but from our Y, we want to add 90 degrees so that it stands up and it's facing us you know, the right way up. And once that's done, we can just plug this into our new rotation here in our set world rotation and we're finished. So this uh, this little snippet here uh, might be familiar to you guys who've been with me for a while. I use this exact thing in the Resident Evil camera video to make the cameras always point at the player. It's just sort of the same thing, just in reverse so that the fireball is always looking at the player's camera. All right, so we can compile that, make sure that we can use our function and then get into building out our uh, file. So let's go back to the event graph here. We won't need begin overlap or the tick. We just want the begin play. We'll drag out of this, grab ourselves a set timer by function name, and the function name is going to be our face fireball. We could, if we wanted to, uh, put our face fireball code right there on event tick, uh, but using a timer like this, it'll create its own little subroutine and be a little bit more easier on the engine, create a little bit less lag. But we'll set our time here to something very, very fast, 0 0.01, make sure that it loops. And uh, I think we're set. Of course, off begin play. Uh, well, I should explain. So when the player clicks, when they fire their shot, it's the projectile itself here, a little fireball uh, blueprint that's going to be actually applying its own physics to itself. So we'll grab our sphere, our root component, and we want to add an impulse. Uh, add impulse. And this impulse here, it's going to be a physics impulse that's going to be able to fire the projectile uh, through the air. That impulse uh, at this location, this this vector here, and we'll connect this up. Uh, this will come from, uh, if we right click and get the player pawn. There we go. And then we want to cast to the first person character, which is the one that we'll be using. We can right click this node, convert it to a pure cast, so we don't have to fire through this execution, because we're, you know, we're, we're sure that it's going to succeed. This is the only pawn that we're using. And then out of here, um, what do we want to do? We want to well, we need a place in the player that we can fire it from. So let's jump back into our first person character, head to the viewport and have a look at what we can do here. So let's grab our FP gun, uh, head to add component and we'll create a scene component. And this scene component, which we'll rename to muzzle, is going to be where the actual shot is going to be fired from. So I'll position this somewhere right in front of the gun. Uh, we can turn off, turn off snapping here for a bit more fine adjustment, and we see this forward vector, this X plus, we want to rotate 90 on Z so that that direction, that forward X direction is going to be the direction that our projectile is going to be firing from. So we'll compile that, hit save, jump back to our fireball, and then we can come out of our first person character casting node and we can get our muzzle uh, scene component. So I'll just move this over a little bit. And from here, let's get our forward vector. That's that plus X vector that we uh, that we just talked about. And then we can multiply this vector by float and promote this float here to a variable. This will be our shot, uh, where are our shots? Strength. And that shot strength is gonna be something fairly high. We'll, uh, we'll compile it first. We can set a default and set it to something like 3000. Okay, so let's move this around so we can see it. We'll plug in the result of this multiply into our impulse. We don't need to set a bone name, uh, but we will check this velocity change so uh, it'll be a change of velocity, not just a straight up impulse. In other words, the uh, mass of our sphere will have no effect. But while we're talking about the sphere, uh, what we need to do is make sure that it simulates physics. Uh, we can set the mass in kilos. Uh, I think uh, set it to something absurdly high, like 50,000. And we also want to make sure that our collision presets are set to a physics actor. 
And that should be about all, although we do have to check generates hit events so we can detect when it's when it's touching surfaces. And that should be all we have to do there with the sphere. So let's uh, compile that, we'll save it. Okay, so out of this add impulse, let's play our sound effect. So we'll get play sound 2D. There we go, our sound effect is going to be uh, the fireball SFX uh, that I mentioned at the start. Then once that's done, we want to clear uh, well, actually, no, we want to delay for a while because it's uh, it'd be very untidy just to leave it there, just sitting there infinitely, just running that timer. So we'll delay for about five seconds. Then out of this, we'll clear that timer, clear timer by function name. The function name is going to be face fireball. Uh, that's our function that we set, uh, or our timer that we set over here. We'll just clear that. And then once that's cleared, we can destroy the actor. Nice and tidy, nice and clean. Okay, so we'll compile that. We'll save it and then head back to our first person character. So over in the event graph, what we have here is our shooting script, which is this, this big chunk down here at the bottom. We're not gonna need uh, a lot of this. In fact, all we're gonna need is just our fire event and just this montage, and that will be all. So we'll just drag these guys away and move this down so we can see. So all I've done is just chopped this straight out of the existing shooting uh, blueprint. It's just going to play that uh, original first person fire uh, montage on the, the arms. And then out of this, we can spawn our uh, blueprint. So we'll spawn, spawn actor from class. The class is going to be our fireball, fireball BP proj. And the transform, if we right click this and split that structure pin, uh, we'll be able to, to apply some, some values here, some initial values. So let's grab our gun. Uh, we can come out of the gun here. This is just a slightly different way that we can do it. When we can grab this scene here, but there is a there is a muzzle socket in our gun that we can also call on. I thought I'd cover both. So we'll uh, get our socket location. The socket name is muzzle. Uh, we'll duplicate this. No, we don't want to duplicate it. We want the rotation as well. So let's get socket, get socket rotation. The socket is also going to be muzzle. And then we can plug these guys into our spawn actor the location and the rotation. We can leave the transform scale to 1.0 because we've already set the scale in our uh, in our blueprint. And that is all that we need to do. I mean, we could also just grab our muzzle and, and use that as our uh, calculations. There is also a get socket, uh, get socket transform. Uh, we, we can use this and then split this and use these values if we wanted to. There's lots of ways that we can do things. Uh, I just like the, I like the look of this, I like the control that this uh, little setup gives us. And it doesn't cost any more on our uh, performance. So it's perfectly serviceable for what we're trying to do here. And this is all we need to do in our player. So we can combine that, compile that rather, save it. And then uh, we're about ready to test. So back in the, uh, in the editor here, let's hit play. And then when we left click, we're now shooting fireballs around. How cool is that? We're now lobbing some fireballs. And after five seconds, they're going to despawn. They're just gonna destroy themselves and they'll be done with their, uh, with their little job. They're sitting a little bit off the ground. Uh, so if we go back to our fireball here. We can make our plane, uh, which is sitting right there at the center. We can make this a little bit bigger. Uh, there we go. Compile that, save it, hit play again. Okay, that's, uh, that's a little bit better. All right, the last thing that I wanna check out is that we could do some more things. We can make them, uh, for example, uh, explode after a couple of bounces. And this is why we enabled the, the generating hit events on our sphere. If we have our sphere selected over here on the left in our components and scroll down to the bottom, we have on component hit. So we'll grab this node, generate one of these, and we'll come out of this, uh, well, we have our hit here, so we can break this hit result uh, like that. And we can do different things based on the location where it's been hit and that sort of thing. But what I really wanna do is count the number of times that it's been hit. And on the, let's say the third hit, uh, it's going to explode. So we'll make ourselves a new variable, uh, call it bounces. Make sure this is set to an integer, just your regular run of the mill integer, compile it, but we'll leave this at zero and we'll come straight out of this on component hit into a switch, uh, switch on int, uh, which is somewhere around here, switch on int, there we go. And the integer, if we control drag our bounces, will be our bounces. So let's add some pins here. We have zero, one, and two. We'll just do three bounces, I think off uh, zero and one, uh, let's duplicate our bounces here, drag off here, type in plus plus, we get an increment int node. We'll plug in zero and one, both into this increment int, and our two 
uh, we can set left, well, yeah, alt drag in our bounces off the two. We'll set this back to zero. So it's going to, every time it's get hit, increment this value by one. And when that value gets to two, it's going to set it back to zero. And we can make the, uh, make the, um, fireball explode. So let's spawn an emitter because in the, uh, in the starter content, what we have is an explosion. P underscore explosion. Comes with the engine, totally free to use. Pretty cool, you know, looks all right. And we can just drag location over here, just straight up into location. And we're pretty much done there. So it's gonna be hit twice and then explode. The last thing we'll do though, is that once it has exploded, we can delete the uh, the fireball. So we'll just grab the clear timer by function name and our destroy actor and plug this into the result of our spawn emitter at location. So let's compile that and save it, make sure that everything's working fine. And then we can hit play and have a little look at how this is gonna work. There we go. So it's going to bounce off the wall, the floor a couple of times on the third hit. It is going to pop. All right. So that's a, uh, that's pretty cool. I, I thought I'd share this one because it's nice and uh, nice and flashy, something impressive you can make in just a few minutes. And uh, yeah, I, I really like the way that it looks. So um, let's just have a, a little recap here. So what we're doing when we spawn our uh, projectile well, in, our, in our player character, when we hit our fire event, when we left click, we're going to play the montage for our character to play that animation of the gun and then spawn our fireball projectile uh, right after we do that. And we'll use our muzzle socket from the gun to dictate where that's going to happen. And then in our projectile, in our fireball projectile, we're going to set a timer by this function here, which all it does is just performs a little calculation here to make sure that the fireball plane is always facing uh, the player camera. And it's going to keep repeating that timer on a time of 0 0.01 and looping right up until... After we delay five seconds, it's going to clear that timer and then destroy itself. And in the meantime, fire this impulse on our sphere based on where that muzzle is in our player, the forward vector, multiplied by our shot strength, then play our sound effect, obviously before delaying for five seconds and then destroying itself. And then down here, every time it gets hit, uh, we're going to count the number of times it gets hit, iterate on this number each time. And when we get to the third time, reset that number back to zero, spawn our explosion, clear the timer, and then destroy the actor. Hope this all makes sense to you guys. Uh, let's have another quick look. So at the third hit, <laughs> it's, it's going to go boom. So we have a couple of bounces there. Might roll along the ground for a bit. Uh, we can make a bounce. And there we have it. So it's going to get a couple of bounces in. There we go. And on the third hit, it's going to explode. Yeah, so that's, that's working exactly as intended. It's a very, very cool effect. Very attractive. Good looking. I'm a big fan of this myself. And I uh, hope you guys had fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you uh, hope you put this effect to good use. Uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.